friends. I'd like to start off by addressing a small mistake that I made in my previous video of uh, that the 2nd North Carolina is currently stationed out of Polk County, North Carolina, not Tyrell County. The gear of a soldier could make or break the battle. So let's take a look at what a typical soldier or cavalry soldier would have carried during the war on a daily basis. For starters, we have the haversack, which is, an, which is a canvas bag covered in oil and let harden somewhat. But as you can see, it is still flexible. They had an internal compartment for storing many of the necessary items that one would need. They also came with a linen or cotton removable uh, center that could be easily washed. Now, this would be used for uh, many different things, you know, to carry all your extras that you would need, such as a plate or even a frying pan, even to things of personal entertainment. It would also be used to carry extra bits of clothing and uniform, such as another pair of socks or gloves for when it got cold. The haversacks were so much better in quality that they became a prized target for looting and stealing from Union soldiers by the Confederacy. Another simple tool which would have been carried would be a utensil set, which comprised of a, for, a spoon, a knife, if I can get it to come apart, and a fork. And some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute, now they didn't have this technology back then. Well, that's where you'd be wrong, because they have examples, not in this exact configuration, of interlocking utensil sets as far back as the Roman Empire. Roman, and they have found many examples of such things among Roman legionary camps. Other things that would be carried would be a cup or one of the most versatile tools that one could have in the Civil War, a mucket. We also have my leather gauntlets. Now those would not be carried in the haversack. These, uh, from here on out, this is not stuff that would be carried in the haversack. This would be stuff that would either be worn on the soldier or be carried in a separate uh, bundle roll. Now, the gauntlets must have for riding a uh, huge invaluable piece of equipment there. Um, you also have a wool blanket, uh, extra shirt. You know, these things get a little ripe after a while. You got to change out and get you an extra shirt. We have my shell jacket, nine button shell jacket, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, nine. Nine button shell jacket. Uh, standard uh, wear for the cavalry, as uh, most uh, infantry you would actually see would have a much longer coat, but the reason ours is so much shorter is it's much easier to maneuver on horseback. Also, rations would be carried within the haversack, and those usually consisted of 20 pound, or 20 ounces of salt beef, well, salted or unsalted, uh, salt pork, also 20 ounces, and usually about 12 ounces of hard bread, which is more commonly known as hardtack. Other things that would be carried on the person, which would be a canteen, must have, gets very hot in wool. And a little known uh, piece of gear that was carried primarily by officers, scouts, and artillery. And that was a pair of binoculars. 
Now, if you look at examples from the war, you actually see that the vast majority of them say made in Paris around the eye rims. Now that's interesting because at the time, the United States did not have the means to make fine optics like this. And the French were second to none <laughs> in their manufacturing of these. And so many of them were imported and would typically be bought separately from anything else that would be issued. Now, as you can see, my case is entirely not period correct. This is what a period correct one would look like. And uh, hopefully one day I actually ha get to have one. As for some other things that would be worn, uh, you have the wool trousers, the leather jack boots. Um, when a soldier was not in uh, full uniform, say wearing the shell jacket and all that, he was expected to also wear a uh, vest. Now within the vest and all that, they would also carry pocket watches. You know, very handy pieces of equipment. And then the hat. And then the hat, which would vary from Brand, very in differences from branches of the army, whether that be cavalry, infantry, and artillery. What would be worn over everything, at least uniform wise, would be the cartridge belt. which is a belt that houses a pouch for an extra cylinder for the revolvers, the percussion cap cartridge box, the holder for the revolver, and a larger cartridge box sitting at the back. Now cartridges were what they used for ammunition, and that would consist of a rolled piece of paper or linen, depending, filled with gunpowder and having a ball seated within it. And that is another piece of equipment is the carbine sling, which houses another frontal um, cartridge box and the clip, which would go onto a ring on the side of the long gun to actually hold it to where you wouldn't drop it if you were riding on a horse. Now on to a part that most of you are probably here for, and that is weaponry. Now there was a number of different options for soldiers depending on which part of the war you were in as well as which side you were actually on. But for a typical cavalry soldier, uh, they would be issued a revolver, a long gun, and a saber. Now, the particular one that I carry, 1858 New Army Remington. The long gun that I carry is a model 1863 Sharps Carbine. As a safety precaution, when doing reenactments, the second North Carolina, as a rule, does not take the field with sabers. Safety is a paramount concern for reenactors. And while it may be more accurate to wear a saber when out on the field, there is a great risk that it could trip someone and violently injure them.
have and probably was carried at some point by a cavalry soldier, most of which was provided to him by his own wages. Now, nowadays, all of this gear is bought by reenactors for themselves, and for that reason, most people shy away from any form of reenactment. But I encourage you, if you have a love of history and desire to see what all the fuss is about, then come to an event. Speak with those who are involved, and I can assure you that most of us would absolutely love it if you came up and said, hey, I'm interested. How can I get started in this hobby? And by no means are you expected to have all of this your first go around. Everything that you see here has been accumulated over the past six years. If you'd like a more in-depth look at anything that I've shown here today, then please leave a comment below. If you like what I've done here today, then please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And as always, I am your most obedient servant, Corporal Killian.